winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. It's the red skin report. So, so, so is everything red skin in the source? The 2012 Washington Redskins, your NFC East champions. The Redskins Report. Welcome to the Redskins Report. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. I'm trying to hide it, but I can't help it. I cannot hide the excitement. You know what I'm talking about. I don't even really need to explain it to you, but I will, of course. I will because that's what I do. Freddie D is back. And for a while there, I was extremely optimistic. And I said, oh, he'll be back and he's not going anywhere. But at the end of this process, I got really nervous and I had started to mentally prepare myself for Freddie D not being back in D.C. But... At the end of the day, the Redskins and Fred Davis were able to reach an agreement on a one-year deal. And I was really nervous because I thought that Buffalo was going to pull out all the stops. They had to cap space to make things happen. More money than the Redskins could offer Fred Davis. I thought they were going to use that to their advantage. But the Bills had concerns. Fred Davis had concerns. They both shared those concerns with each other. And at the end of the day, they couldn't get past those concerns far enough and come close enough together to hatch out a deal that will work for both parties. And, and this is how I feel like it went between the Bills and Fred Davis. And I'm going to use a baseball analogy here, so you have to really follow me on this one. So the Bills basically went like this. Hey, Fred, how you doing? Fine. Fine. So what are you looking for in terms of cost? What are you looking for, Fred? Looking for a triple. Hmm. A triple, you say? It's pretty hard to do, Fred. We have some concerns, have some issues that we're not really sure about right now. And I don't think we're going to be able to offer you a triple. How about a stand-up double instead? I want a triple. Look, Fred, we're not sure about your Achilles injury. And we're not sure if you've quit smoking weed yet. So, we can only offer you a stand-up double. What do you say, champ? I want a triple. We can't do it. And Fred said, look, I need a triple. It's Orchard Park, New York. When's the last time anyone jumped ship and came to Orchard Park, New York to play football? Since when is this the trendy place to come and play football? Oh, yeah, and you guys play games in Canada, too. B, you're not a winning program. C, who's your quarterback again? I need a triple. I understand your concerns, Fred. We can only give you a stand-up double. The Redskins came in and said, hey, Fred, we can't give you a triple. You know that. But we can give you a leg-out double. Now, you're going to have to leg it out. As soon as you hit it, you're going to have to hustle out of the box. And you're going to have to slide in the second. It's going to be a close play, but you're going to be safe. 
The same thing that the Bills are offering, just a little bit less. That's all. And I've said this on many different platforms before. And I've talked about it on this show, on some of my other shows. You got to be able to overspend when you're a bad football team. When you're not a winning outfit, you got to be able to overpay sometimes. When you're not a winning team, when your play on the field doesn't speak for itself, when it doesn't do the talking for you, guess what? You got to talk with the green. You got to talk with the green, man. You got to come off of the green. And the Bills weren't able to do that. When your play on the field does not speak for itself, when you're not winning football games, money talks. Everything else walks. And so the green is what you got to talk with. Everybody understands that language. The Bills weren't ready to part ways with enough bread to get Fred Davis. And if you're a Bills fan, that sucks. Because you could use a guy like Fred Davis on your football team. And so the Redskins slid in and said, hey, Fred, we can't offer you a triple. You know that. But we can offer you a double which is basically what the Bills are offering. And Fred said, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. He opened his eyes. He was back in D.C. And we're all happy because of it. And so it's a great move on the part of the Redskins. Great move by Fred Davis. I think this is a beneficial deal for both parties involved because if you look at it, Fred Davis is betting on himself that he'll come back better than ever from this Achilles injury, have a huge 2013 season, and then he'll hit the market again next year when he can command big dollars. Teams will be more willing to spend on him because that Achilles injury will be behind him. And the Redskins, who next season will have over $30 million in cap space waiting on him, will be able to spend on a guy like Fred Davis. And in the 2013 season, they can sit back and watch and make sure that Fred is over that Achilles injury and they can make sure that he's steer clear of any trouble. So it's a win-win for both parties involved. A great move by the Redskins, a great move by Fred Davis. And again, I've always said this. The one thing I don't worry about with the Redskins is their cap situation. We have capologists that get it. They find a way to dance around the numbers and make it work. Even when it seems bleak, they find a way to make it work. And so, let me give you a hypothetical. Let me give you a hypothetical because the terms of this deal have not been disclosed yet. And so, I don't know what the exact numbers are. But let me give you a hypothetical. Say the Redskins offered Fred Davis a one-year, $2 million contract. Let's say the Bills offered him a two-year, $5 million contract because it was reported that the Bills offered him a little bit more and they offered him two years. So let's say that the Bills offered him two years, $5 million. Redskins offered him one year, $2 million. Essentially what you're saying is 2.5 mil per over two seasons for Fred Davis. So we're talking about 500K extra per season, more than the Redskins, for a total of $1 million more than what the Redskins were willing to pay. That's not enough money to pry Fred Davis away from a comfortable situation. Not enough. I need more. I need more of a reason to leave. You need to give me some type of reassurance that if this doesn't work, at least I can say to myself, well, at least I got paid. Because guys realize often that, hey, the grass wasn't greener on the other side. That was a failed experiment. And I need to just go back home. How often do you see guys leave in free agency, sign a lucrative deal somewhere, realize that it didn't work, three years later they're back with the team that they left in free agency? But at least they always can tell themselves, hey, at least I got paid. But Fred Davis wouldn't have been able to do that because having to move from D.C. to Buffalo, getting a new apartment, condo, house, whatever floats his boat, having to change scenery, all of those things cost money. And before you know it, that 500K extra that he would have earned from signing with the Bills would have been gone. It would have been squandered. And all of a sudden, it wouldn't have been worth the move. Because there's uncertainty there.
And so it just made more sense for Fred to return to D.C. than to go and play for the Buffalo Bills because they weren't giving him that extra incentive to leave Buffalo. They just weren't. And at the end of the day, if your dollars don't make sense, I can't do it. I can't leave. And it just didn't make enough sense for Fred Davis to leave D.C. So we got Fred Davis back. Get excited. And look, I know there's a lot of people out there that thought like, hey, we can move on from Fred Davis. We need safety help. We need corner help more than we need Fred Davis back. Hogwash. We needed Fred Davis back. I'm excited about this. You should be excited about this. We got Freddie D back in D.C. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Another great move and a long list of great moves this offseason for the Redskins. If you can't spend money on other free agents from other teams, you might as well take care of your own stuff. And that's what we did this offseason. Every single free agent, restricted and unrestricted, we took care of them with the exception of one, Lorenzo Alexander. And so, as a Redskins fan, you got to feel really good about this. You got to feel really good about this. We got Freddie D back in D.C. Yeah. I feel great. Can't speak for you, but I feel excellent. <laughs> I really wanted this to happen. It did. Now we can move on to another matter of business. So that next order of business for us, as we all know, let's get Anton Winfield. I talked about this the last time we met, and I said it'd be a great move for the Redskins, a great stopgap measure for the Redskins to take, You're getting a veteran corner who can go out and get it done. Again, he's much like Rondé Barber, much like London Fletcher in the sense that his game is fine like wine. It just gets better with time. And so I would love to have Antoine Winfield on this team. And I think if we get him, that would complete our offseason in terms of free agency. I wouldn't need another move by the Redskins. And frankly, we wouldn't have any money to do so anyway. <laughs> but if we get him, add him to Josh Wilson and EJ Biggers. That would give us three solid corners right there. Then you look, we already have Richard Crawford on the roster. And if Chase Minifield can come in, you got five corners right there. Bada bing, bada boom. So if we can get Antoine Winfield to sign his name on the dotted line to play in DC, man, would that be huge or what? Because we're getting a solid corner if we're able to do that. So that's the next order of business now. For the next however long it takes until he decides where he wants to make his next home in the National Football League. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Much like with Fred Davis, how I talked about him just about on every episode, the Redskins report. I'm going to be talking about us trying to get a guy like Antoine Winfield to come and play in D.C. Because, frankly, we need a guy like Antoine Winfield in D.C. A veteran corner that's going to come in and help us immediately. We don't need a lot of young guys who don't get it, who will be learning on the fly, who will be getting baptized while playing. It'll be baptism by fire. And we don't need that. We don't need guys getting burnt to a crisp while still trying to learn the nuances of the NFL game. We don't need guys learning lessons, being taken to school by veteran NFL receivers. We need guys who have seen it all, who know what these guys in the league are capable of, and know how to get it done. And a guy like Antoine Winfield, will provide that for us. EJ Biggers has been in the league now for three, four seasons. So he's seen a lot in the league. Feel confident about him being on the field. Josh Wilson, solid corner. We know what we're getting out of him. That's all we would need, essentially, is those three guys, and then you get whatever you get out of Richard Crawford. And if Chase Minifield can help, great. If he can't, we'll look elsewhere for another veteran presence or maybe a guy out of the draft that'll come in and be able to be someone that can be on the outskirts looking in, trying to make the roster. But right now, our next goal, get Antoine Winfield in a Redskins uniform. And they pulled out all the stops when they met with him on Thursday. 
They had Robert Griffin III accompany them at the restaurant. Bruce Allen was there, of course. Mike Shanahan was there. They really pulled out all the stops. They went full court press on Antoine Winfield. They even put together a montage of him, of some of his best plays. And they started it out with him dominating the Redskins of all teams. And so they really want this guy back. And so that's how you woo a player. You show them that, hey, we want you worse than anyone else does. And here's how we prove it. We wine and dine you. We put together a montage. We bring our most valued asset with us to beg you to come to D.C. What more do you need? The green. Do we have enough? That's the big question. Do we have enough of the dirty cream green? Do we have enough of that spinach? Do we have enough of that green? If we don't, he probably won't sign with us. If we do, and what we sold him is appealing enough for him to want to come to D.C., which I feel like us winning the division and us having Robert Griffin III at the quarterback position, us really being in the middle of the mix in the NFC conference as a whole, that has to be appealing to Antoine Winfield, a guy who hasn't really won in his career, has to really sound good to him. It has to resonate with him and the fact that we really do want him. We really do need him in D.C. That also helps. But at the end of the day, the dollars must make sense. And if they don't, then he probably won't sign with us. But we'll see. We've done everything on our end that we could do. Now it's up to Antoine Winfield, his agent, and his handlers to decide if, in fact, the Redskins have a good enough deal, that they put together a good enough package to get him to D.C. We're trying to reel in a big fish here. Let's see if our bait was good enough. Last but not least here on the program today, we went out and signed Daryl Tapp, a defensive end, and you ask yourself, isn't this guy playing a 4-3 defense? How does he help us? You have to be scheme diverse in the league. If you want to hang around in the National Football League, you have to be scheme diverse, meaning you have to be able to play in any base defense, 3-4, 4-3, 4-6, doesn't matter. And Daryl Tapp can do that. He's going to have to do that. And the rest can see him as a guy that can come in, get pressure on the quarterback, play some special teams. Remember, we lost Lorenzo Alexander. A guy like Chris Wilson, maybe he'll be back. Maybe he won't. You're going to need a guy that can come in and get situational pass rushing pressure on the quarterback. You're going to have to have a guy that you can put in the game on third and seven when a rack pole is tired or injured or both. Rob Jackson is going to miss the first four games of the season. You're going to need someone that can come in the game and occasionally get pressure on the quarterback. Say you decide to keep a rack pole on the field, Kerrigan on the field, and you want to have a five or six linebacker look where you just come with an inordinate amount of pressure. You're going to need to be able to put guys on the field that can do that. Daryl Tapp is a guy that can do that. Now, he hasn't really generated that much pressure on the quarterback of late, but it's there. He's been a guy that can get pressure on the quarterback, and why not? Solid pickup, doesn't cost you a lot. He'll come in, he'll work hard. I don't see why a guy like Daryl Tapp won't fit in nicely with this roster. So solid move by the Redskins. Again, taking little subtle steps to building something big in D.C. Another small move that goes under the radar you don't even notice. Much like the move that we made over the offseason that probably none of you, maybe some of you, noticed. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. But the Redskins signed Ron Brace, defensive tackle from New England. He really underachieved in New England. He was a second-round pick by the Patriots out of Boston College. A lot of you probably didn't even know we made that signing. He's another guy that we're going to throw into the mix in this offseason and see what he can bring to the table. And maybe we get the best out of Ron Brace. Maybe New England wasn't a good fit for him. Maybe in D.C. he will flourish. We don't know. We'll see. But here's a guy that Maybe he'll come in and play really good football for us. That's what we're doing. We're taking little small steps towards becoming a really good franchise. And I love it. 
a lot. In the words of Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber, I like it a lot. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. And so, I'm feeling good. It's Friday. The Redskins are making great moves. We got Fred Davis back. Freddie D is back in deep sink. I feel great. And so, not much more for me to say other than I'm a Redskins fan. Etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. My Redskins spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to the Redskins. See you next time. We got Freddy D back. We got Freddy D back. The Red Skins Report.